Welcome to the Liberati Mansion. Welcome to Under the Vegas Sun, looking at the people, the events, and the news surrounding Las Vegas and the entire Vegas Valley. Hello, I'm Steve Shaw. We are live from the Liberace Mansion. One of the fastest growing businesses in America today is a business that 20, 30, 40 years ago you would never have thought would have been successful. It is the marijuana business. Today, the business alone is worth billions of dollars. But controversy still surrounds the business, especially the controversy between recreational and medical marijuana. On our program today, we'll hope at least to clear up a little part of that controversy, discussing specifically medical marijuana and the advancements that have now taken place. You'll meet a very special advocate of that effort when we come back. Stay with us. Back in the 60s and 70s, the thought of marijuana was a thought that really conjured up a picture of what were called reefers. Like myself, I went to Woodstock. Woodstock was all about that thing called marijuana. Today, it's all changed. Today, it's all different. Right now, eight states in the District of Columbia have now approved recreational marijuana. But more than half of the states in America have now approved medical marijuana. But that's where the rub goes. Most people don't know, don't understand, and don't really get the grasp of what medical marijuana truly is all about. On our program today, we hope to kind of ease that notion and try to give people some, at least some knowledge about what medical marijuana is all about. Our very special guest in the program is probably the medical marijuana advocate that I've ever come across. Her name is Mona Lisa Samuelson. Welcome to our program. Thank you for having me. Okay, so as I said, back in the 60s and 70s, uh, the thought of marijuana conjured up a picture in people's mind. Um, although I never partook in marijuana back then, uh, it, it was at Woodstock, the thing that people did. They were people in the Mary Jane. Today, it's an industry, a multi-billion dollar industry. Do you think people truly understand, number one, what the industry is, and number two, that separation between medical marijuana and recreational marijuana that was back in the 60s and 70s? Those are really good questions, and I'd have to say that most people don't have any idea that medical marijuana is separate from recreational and that we understand how the entire plant is used. And that's the difference between a recreational understanding of marijuana and a medical understanding of marijuana. And that, to me, is the big defunct that we have, uh, this industry. Although everybody who is for uh, patient advocacy and marijuana uh, prohibition to end. We all want to see this industry become something that we can all be part of. Uh, it's only here now in the beginning when it's the beginning of an industry that we don't quite have the clear understanding to where people like me would jump on board. So as we build this industry, I think it's important that patient advocacy remain at the top of the industry's issues. Okay, you keep, on recreational. you keep on saying that same thing. Patient advocacy. Yes. Medical marijuana, to you, is not a drug as much as it, as it is a medicine to help people, correct? It even goes a little bit further than that because the simplicity is that marijuana is a superfood that helps people. And once you understand that, then you really do understand the difference between recreational and medical marijuana. One, you primarily smoke it and use it in one form, and then with medical marijuana, you use it in every other form but the smoking. The smoking is your last effort to stop your pain or to interrupt your pain. 
But so it's not your first go-to. In the, fact, we learn everything else about this plant. The entire marijuana plant mm -hmm. has a minimum, if not more, than 100 cannabinoids. That's right. That, that, those are chemicals specific to the plant that, if I'm not mistaken, you tell me if I'm wrong, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, those are chemicals that can be used medicinally to help people. That's correct. So, so let me give you my experience, okay? And you tell me if it is a regular experience or not. Uh, I, I had a chance to um, to meet with uh, a young soldier uh, who had returned uh, from some very very fierce fighting uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, returned after three tours of duty. Uh, had the most severe case of PTSD that I think that he admitted that he had ever come across. He was in a disastrous situation personally. Right. When I talked to him, when I met him, he was in a completely different place because of what he said was the miracle of the medicine of what medical marijuana was. You're okay. shaking your head. Yes. I am. I am. Okay, so when it comes to medical marijuana, there are applicable purposes for smoking. And even people who are not used to using marijuana, and soldiers especially, when they first use it, it is, uh, it is a lifesaver. Uh, to be able to get out of your brain and to look at a situation from different perspectives is something that marijuana is famous for. That's why everybody uses it. But there is far more of a benefit to things that you do not put a match to to inhale. And so that is the number one thing about medical marijuana and these chemical constituents. You wouldn't burn up these chemical constituents if you were trying to use them. So instead of trying to smoke them necessarily, you try to ingest them, you try to eat them. So medical marijuana is about using marijuana for all its benefit. And one of them is definitely allowing the brain to access different parts of itself. So for so the audience's sake. Yes. Uh, when it comes to medical marijuana, you're talking about utilization of the stem, uh, the flower, which typically is, is, is smoked for most people, uh, the, the leaf, uh, the seed, all of those things that are part of the entire plant, not just that flower right. that becomes so critically important for the recreational use. Yes, that's what people know, is they know that that flower is the business model. The business model of marijuana is built around that bud. The business model cannot be built around that bud if you want to make it medicinal, because that's not what patients need. And so that is the rub as far as patients are concerned, because the industry has built itself to create something that we don't necessarily want to consume en masse. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna again, make a statement. <laughs> okay. I, I, don't, I think I'm right, but I'm not really sure. Every single individual has within themselves a cannabinoid system. Endocannabinoids. Right, Endo, it's called endocannabinoids. It's a system within your own body that, that creates the chemical uh, wear for all for your body to, to fight certain things. To, That's to right. Be. And, and if I'm not mistaken, you tell me if I'm wrong. What the uh, cannabinoid uh, chemistry of what medical marijuana is, is to enhance our own body functions. Is that correct? It allows our body to communicate with itself. And so instead of just having one-way pathways of information, with the right cannabinoids, now you have two ways. You have a two-way street instead of a one-way street. And so you can access much better health if you understand how to use marijuana. Okay, here's my toughest question for you. Okay. Then. If that is the case, why have organizations like Normal that have worked tirelessly to change the stigma of what marijuana is, medical marijuana in particular, why is that stigma still there uh, dealing with marijuana, especially medical marijuana? Is it because people don't understand? Is it because... The movies of years gone by, the, the Woodstocks of the world, uh, uh, the recreational marijuana use of the world. Does that subtract and take away, as far as you're concerned, what the good that medical marijuana can and often does? 
I think every conversation about marijuana is a winning conversation, even if it is one about stigma. Really? Yes, I do. Why? Because that's how you talk about things. That's how you challenge norms, is you get people to talk about them. So what we've seen so far, I don't think is necessarily hurting. I just, as an advocate, think that we've missed such an important element to this conversation. And it hasn't been an important part of the conversation because it isn't about profits. What I'm here to discuss and what I show patients is completely against okay, wait a minute. everything. Stop. Wait a minute, stop. <laughs> okay. Okay, stop. <laughs> it's a multi-billion yes. dollar business. This is true. And you don't care about the profits. What you care about is, what did you just say? Me? Yeah. What do I care about? Yeah. I care that people understand how to use this plant. And if you understand how to use this plant, then you're going to understand that it's not very profitable to use it correctly. Because you use it as a superfood. You use it as a fruit. You use it as a vegetable. What we would consume. Uh, here we're allowed to consume one ounce per transaction. We're allowed to purchase one ounce per transaction. For a patient, an ounce cooked of flour is nothing. Is really nothing, absolutely nothing. And I so, would think so. <laughs> so we have a real disconnect on what is the proper usage. And I'm here to shock everybody and to let them understand that the real usage is to use marijuana as a fruit, as a superfood, to consume that en masse. And so what we have done as an industry to regulate small amounts for personal consumption is, stop. is only recreational. Okay. So I'm going to take a break for a second. When okay. I come back, I want to talk about two things that I think also are very confusing to people, and that is THC okay. and CBD, okay. two, two very important initials that mean a whole heck of a lot, but people don't understand. So we're going to get to that in just a couple of seconds. This is really, to me, an eye-opening knowledge about this whole thing. Hopefully you are getting that knowledge as well. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Eamon Springall of Stitched at the Cosmopolitan, and you're watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. Since 1970, marijuana has been included in the Controlled Substance Act of America. The question is, why still? If, if medical marijuana does so much good, why still? What is the role now of Congress and the Attorney General when it comes to it? A very special guest, probably the advocate for medical marijuana, Mona Lisa Samuelson. Welcome back to our program. Thank you. <laughs> so Congress recently took action to try to protect medical marijuana in America from potential actions of the Department of Justice. Um, I think Congress now sees maybe the, the value of, of what medical marijuana can do. But there's still a lot of questions remaining because I think there is a confusion between the benefits of medical marijuana and the THC of the marijuana that's recreational, that hallucinogenic part of it, that I don't think people understand the separation. Could you explain it? It's the most amazing thing when you just, when you just think about it in the basic, most basic element. THC is completely non-psychoactive at its beginning property. It is a THCA, it's an acid. And only upon conversion does it become psychoactive. So you need either time or heat to affect that plant before it becomes psychoactive. So that is the most amazing thing that this should confuse people because the only confusing part to marijuana is when you then start adding heat because only then does it become psychoactive. So marijuana is an amazing plant. It's the cannabis plant. And if you consume that plant, you can achieve uh, much better health because the benefits of those cannabinoids and the plant's chemicals, not just THC, but THCA and CBDA and all these other chemicals that start out as acids can be consumed. They're not burnt up. And so medical marijuana has to do with all of these chemicals and especially these chemicals before they've ever been hit with but, heat. But, <laughs> but they have found already some amazing utilization for, um, for the, the, the nature of the medical part of the plant, the chemicals right. that are there. Uh, epilepsy, especially epilepsy okay. in young children. 
that they can control now because of the, the, the medicinal oils that can be extracted from the plant, from the leaves, from the stem, from the seed, from, from all part of that. You're a wonderful example of it. I mean, uh, hopefully I won't embarrass, but you were bedridden for a long period of time. <clears throat> And what the medical part of this plan has allowed you to do is be up and sit here and, and, and talk to us. People don't understand, do they? Do, it, and, I, and I wonder if it is just this preconceived notion that we have of what marijuana is rather than the true knowledge of what the plant can do. You're right on that part, absolutely. People do not understand the plant entire. They're very comfortable with the party aspects and the things that they understand as far as the flower or the bud. But the plant entire is something people don't understand at all. And it's because of these chemical constituents. Once they are heated, it becomes psychoactive, and so that changes the perception of what this plant is all about. There has been a creation, and I think, I think many, many people have now realized the potential of CBDs. So I think it's important to explain to the audience what CBDs are and, and why now they're seen as being somewhat of a healing power all of their own. And there's in CBD, if I'm not mistaken, there is no THC, that's right? right? Well, okay, so that's the thing. If you were to just take CBD on its own, if you could extract it without the THC in it, that's where this industry has come up with industrial hemp. So CBD alone, although it can be a chemical constituent that helps people, it's not exactly the chemical constituent we want alone. We want that with a little bit of THC. This is the beauty of the marijuana plant. This is why we want marijuana or cannabis as opposed to industrial hemp. So CBD is something that modulates THC and it allows for people to consume THC in greater quantities without experiencing the great stress and the paranoia. And so this plant works together. There is so much being said today, and I hate to put you on the spot, but there's so much being said today about the opioid epidemic that has run wild mm -hmm. in America. Um, people have taken opioids because of chronic pain, mm -hmm. all of us. There isn't a single person. All of us have a certain amount of inflammation in our own bodies. That is a natural part of our bodies. That inflammation creates other problems down the line. Um, if I'm not mistaken, what they've been able to find is that certain CBDs, certain CBD oils, can relieve the pain, can relieve the muscle issues, can relieve a whole lot of things. And the question to you is, if we know that today, what will we know tomorrow? <laughs> well, I'm hoping what everybody knows tomorrow is that THC and CBD are very important chemical constituents, but they are, they are the after effect of CBC and CBG. So CBG and CBC are precursors to THC and CBD. Everybody now understands about THC and CBD. They're getting a better understanding of how this works and how they interact. So what we need people to really understand is what are the precursors and why do those help? Because if people understand CBC and CBG like they understand THC and CBD, then they will have to understand that medical marijuana is about using the plant at different stages of maturation. And if you understand that you use this plant in different stages of maturation, then you fully understand medical marijuana. Can that relieve the issues that are out there with opioid abuse? It absolutely will. And I think this is something that you have to keep these conversations going, whether it be about the wrong stigma. It doesn't matter. To real advocates, the conversation just needs to keep being pushed forward. Because the fact of the matter is, things like marijuana, uh, and people getting together and discussing marijuana and how it's helped them. That is how the opioid crisis began to turn around in the first place. But if, but if states, if lawmakers, if officials that govern 
marijuana mm -hmm. only allow an ounce to somebody, mm -hmm. how will you ever get to that point of they will, where they can understand the true benefit of what you're talking about, which is the medicinal part of this plant that can, if done correctly, relieve the opioid crisis in America? Well, that's what I'm hoping to have a piece of the action of. I don't necessarily want to do anything in the industry, but I want to make sure that we regulate this right. And I want to make sure that our patients in Nevada have a medical program. So it's very important that people understand what is the difference. And when we're regulated to one ounce for recreational users and two and a half ounces for a patient, which is crazy, for a month we can't exist on those kind of limitations. So until we have this kind of understanding, we are at a standstill on what we can do. And so it's important that somebody take up the issue with the regulators and hope that people understand, work towards a better understanding. And so that's what I came to do. <laughs> How do you relieve the fear, though? How do you relieve the fear of a parent um, a, that has a child that talks about marijuana mm -hmm. at the same time that same parent has a medicine closet filled with opioids, how do, you, how do you bridge that gap? How do you get that from point A to point B? That has always been a really good question, and I've never gotten the answer to that because I've always been the kind of person that I'm here to help when people understand how they feel about marijuana. To try to teach them a new policy on how they feel, I'm really not good at that. Where can people find <laughs> out more? Where can people find out more information about this medicinal plant that has already shown to be able to help people in, in, in a way that is non-political. Uh, is, is it Googling it? Is it going to website? Is it finding out the truth rather than what people are being told? I really think that all medical marijuana patients are born out of need and they all educate themselves. So we have very, uh, uh, broad base of educated people who are finding out what works for them. Now, do we have a database for patients to get together? No, but that's what I'm going to be working on <laughs> because I think it's very important as we build this out as an industry that we have a network for patients where they have a voice and they can work out together what is important and what is the conversation because you're right. Most of the regulatory conversation is very misinformed. They're still dealing on recreational marijuana standards. Well, I think what you've done today for the audience uh, to be able to share the knowledge is critically important because I think if we ever get to the point of where we can, we can resolve this opioid crisis, it will be uh, through people like you who understand what the true medical uh, possibilities are of the future. So I thank you very much for being with us. It's been very, very enlightening, and I, and I truly appreciate you being here. Thank, thank you, very you much. Steve. I do want to mention that I have a channel on YouTube called Mona Lisa Loves Mary Jane, where I teach our patients how to do the most basic processes on cooking their medicine. Because for me, the most important part was that people understood the practical application. Because if they understand that, then we all can get better. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank I you. appreciate it. It is all about understanding, and hopefully you've uh, understood a little bit more. We'll have some closing words in just a moment. Hey, it's Mark Chinook from Monday's Dark, and you are watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. It's amazing to me how much you learn about things like marijuana from the advocates and the people who are involved in that fight every single day. And it's clear that I think most of us don't even realize it and don't even know the true facts about it, just some of the things that we've heard over time. Hopefully our program today has given you some insight into exactly what that industry and what medical marijuana is all about. Speaking of insight, we're still hoping to gain more insight into the situation in Las Vegas where those wonderful stars on the Las Vegas Strip, those big names that were there, that were removed to pull in the bollards, will be returned. So far, we've talked to a number of people, and the hope is the wonderful walk of stars will return once again to Las Vegas. At least we can hope so. Until the next time, I'm Steve Shore. Be safe and enjoy life under the Vegas sun. The world of business today is ever changing. What does it take to move that needle forward? Sometimes it's effective communication 
or an extra voice to be heard, or maybe help in turning the right corner. At Consulting America, we provide all of that and more. Get an edge on the competition. Our team offers more than 100 years of business experience, all to help you. For more information, go to consultingamericanow.com or call us at 702-385-5739. Consulting America, developing innovative strategies today. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. I've been proud to host the TV show Under the Vegas Sun. We've had mayors and entertainers and some of the true movers and shakers of Las Vegas. Well, we're growing again. We'll now be seen in 209 cities in America through our network, Walk TV, as well as in six foreign countries and in Las Vegas. We'll also be seen four times each week on Cox Communications, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m., and now Sundays at 7 p.m. on channels 1096 and 96. I just wanted to say thank you. This has been a presentation of VATV.